presentation, so bear with me. <laughs> well, Coach, uh, how exciting is it for you? And could you talk a little bit about the philosophy that you want for the team? Yeah. It's, it's very exciting. You know, yesterday we had a good day of camp. Um, you know, I think the philosophy that we want to have um, going into this season is just going to be a well-connected um, a well connected team. You know, and I think with that comes communication with all of us, staff, um, and it kind of trickles down to the players. You know, I want to be a hard-playing team. Um, we, we, our front office has done a great job, and our staff has done a great job of identifying the guys um, that we think give us the best chance of, of putting all that into motion. Um, so we've got a long, athletic team, and it's going to make for a very competitive camp. What about being here in the D.C. community, especially with a particular section of the world that's looking for something like this to yeah. boost their morale? Absolutely. Um, you know, being here in Ward 8 means the world to us. You know, obviously us um, literally being here in the middle of their community, it, it's, it, it's speechless. You know, I think what we're able to bring to the community um, and also what they're able to bring to us. You know, it's a sense of community. It's a sense of family. Um, and we want to make sure that everybody in this area, you know, feels like this is home. You know, it's not just for the go-go players, but, you know, everybody's welcome. You know, our doors are always open. Um, our games are going to be open. So hopefully uh, that'll give them a chance to come out and support us. While we're talking about Ward 8, you hear the name go-go. What, what comes to mind when you hear that, that name? Besides you cranking. Yeah, see, I don't crank. You know, that's a, that's a fib that Pop probably told you guys. <laughs> Hopefully some folks here in Ward 8 can, can teach me how to crank if that's a, a thing. Um, you know, it's I, a thing. It's a thing. So I'm right. You know, I, I went to Norfolk State my freshman year in college, so we had a lot of a lot of people from the DMV. So that's kind of where I got my first taste of go-go music, and I fell in love with it. You know, it's, um, it's a unique style, um, and I think that we're going to replicate that in our style of play. You know, we're going to have a unique style. We're going to be exciting. Um, and hopefully, um, we'll have a good crowd here. Um, and we've got to put that into motion as well. Coach, looking at the roster, it feels like you don't have too many traditional bigs um, to speak. Is that by design or just didn't really find, you know, the, the type that you guys really want? Yeah, no, it's uh, it's definitely by design. You know, I think the way our, our roster is set up right now, um, like I mentioned before, our front office and our staff have done a terrific job of identifying talent. Um, and with it being similar to how we want to play. You know, our style of play, we want to get up and down. Um, we want to push the tempo. We want to play with a lot of pace. Um, and obviously, defensively, the way the league is trending, you know, you've got to be able to guard, guard perimeter players. So everybody's switching one through four, one through five. Um, so, so sometimes that tra traditional big, if you can't move his feet laterally, um, sometimes he can't play late in the game, you know, if you can't defend on the other end. Well, will it kind of match a little bit of what Scott Brooks does with the Wizards so that if some of the players are able to trick like up to the to the NBA, will that kind of match that something somewhat? Absolutely. You know, in my um, four seasons in the G League, I think that's the best chance um, to have players find their niche um, at the NBA level. You know, I think there has to be, um, there's got to be a lot of connectivity between the two staffs of the Wizard and the Go-Go. Um, but it also has to be, you know, consistency in what we're preaching, what we're teaching, and the messages that those guys are hearing on a daily basis. So if it, even if it relates to terminology, you know, we're going to have the same terminology offensively and defensively. Um, so that way, if any of those, uh, any of the Wizards staff come down and watch a game, you know, they can kind of see where they can use our guys and where they can fit a niche. For some of these guys, um, it's, it's uh, either your first time playing in the G League or you know something like that. Was there a, a sales element there where you had to convince people, you know, Chase on Randall, um, you know, about the benefits of being in the G League or anything like that? No, not really. You know, I think the the NBA has done a great job <coughs> of um, putting the resources necessary to make the G League really competitive um, and really a place, a destination place for guys to come and get better. You know, and I think once guys understand that, you know, this is a direct pipeline to the NBA, um, a lot more a lot more players are going to take this route, you know, and obviously with the new rules that are going in place in the next few years, um, it's just going to continue to increase the talent level. From your time before you were the Oklahoma City Blue? Correct? Yes, sir. Um, do you have any success stories in particular that you, you know, feel really exemplify that, that pipeline? Yeah, you know, and that's the, the beautiful thing about my past. Um, four seasons is, you know, everybody has their own success story. You know, it could be a guy that started off as, as a tryout player and that's made the roster. It could be a guy that, you know, has been on the roster and got an overseas contract. You know, that's why I think the G League is so special because it can, you know, it can launch people in a different direction. So everybody has their own individual success story to me. Speaking of the new path to the uh, professional league, um, how would, can you explain a little more about how this is going to maybe work? Are you going to be able to scout high school games the way colleges do this season? 
Yeah, that is a great question. You know, um, I'm gonna be honest, I don't have that answer. I don't really know. Um, you know, when those reports came out, I was basically focused on our on our draft um, in this season and getting this thing off to, to a good start. So, newly appointed GM, Pop Spencer Bouncer, uh, speak to us about him and what do you think about you know, his <laughs> impact on this team and his impact on you and, you know, just how you feel like he's helped you in regards to how you dress. <laughs> <laughs> Let's speak on that, please. Yeah, you know, one thing that Pops told me is that I need to work on getting a better tailor for my suits. He said it was a little bit baggy. You know? <laughs> he told me he was going to teach me um, how to how to crank. Is yes. that what it is? So I think this will probably be a good opportunity. So No, I got bad knees. I got bad knees. So no, okay, no. so he's t he told me he's going to teach me how to crank. So that's one thing he's going to help me out with. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the energy that he brings, you know, to the environment, um, him calling D.C. his second home, I think that brings a sense of community and, and a sense of family. Um, I just think he's going to add a ton of value. He's been extremely helpful and supportive of me so far. So you're a good liar, obviously. So <laughs> I also got that from Pop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Coach, okay. just how much of an added benefit is it outside of the two-way guys? Um, the other players on your roster that spent time with the Wizards? Yeah. Get? Those guys uh, are Exhibit 10 guys. You know, they bring a sense of understanding, you know, especially us being an expansion team. Um, so many new players who aren't really familiar with the G League and, and my coaching style. You know, this is my first time being a head coach. So um, those guys have been helpful in just the first day uh, of kind of helping with the terminology, trying to help teach the younger guys. Um, so their that value that they bring, you know, we it, it, it's it's monumental. You know, and I think with those guys continuing to find their their voices um, and find their niche in this league, I think they're all going to be you know, well-respected players moving forward. If you have one thing to say to the community, what would you like to say? Thank you. I want to say thank you to Ward 8 um, for, for opening your arms to us. I want to say thank you to Ward 8 for, for opening your home to us. Um, and I just hope that I get the chance to spend some time with everyone in this community. Have there been any kind of non-basketball uh, areas of the job that have been surprising or interesting for you? You know, other kind of community stuff you have to do? Um, no, not really. You know, obviously just being an expansion team. This is the first time the Wizards have had a G League team. Yeah. So it's just some of the educational pieces. Um, we've had to communicate with some of the folks in the area. Um, it's different, but you know, it's a, it's a challenge that I welcome. Um, and it's a challenge that, you know, being in a head coach position, you know, you're going to get some of those. So no off the court issues other than the traffic. You know, at <laughs> first I was thinking that, you know, the 20 minute commute that, you know, it had on my GPS yeah, wasn't that yeah. bad. But quickly I found out that that 20 minute commute um, can turn to a 50-minute commute mm -hmm. very quickly. Metro's not bad. Metro's not bad. <laughs> yeah, and, and I haven't been a Metro guy yet, so I might have to, you know, explore that option. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Coach. Thanks, Coach.